Good day, everybody. Justin Miller, Oxford College of Physics here. We are going to be looking at a nice problem involving some work done by a constant force in this particular case, and get used to doing some work. So let us just take a look at this. We've got ourselves a two kilogram mass that will be subject to an applied force of 15 newtons in the i-hat direction. We'll have some friction acting on this mass, as well as it slides across, undergoing a displacement of three meters in the i-hat direction, while, of course, it's in contact with the surface, so we're gonna have a normal force, and we got the force due to gravity because we're locally close to Earth's surface. Let's just go ahead and say that the coefficient of kinetic friction between the mass surface and the surface itself, u sub k, is equal to 0 0.23. Five. So there, we got ourselves a coefficient of kinetic friction. We got all the forces, and we just want to know some certain things. So, we are first going to ask, what is the force done by, excuse me, what is the work done by the applied force? So we're going to go through all the forces individually, figure out the work that each does, and then we'll figure out what the net work done is, and then we'll make some comparative um, analyses in a sense. So. A, we want the work done by the applied force. Well, work done by a constant force is the dot product between the force and the displacement vector. So what do we do? We take ourselves our applied force and dot it into our displacement vector. F hat applied dot delta x. And what does that resolve into? Well, that resolves into the magnitude of the force multiplied by the magnitude of the displacement multiplied by the cosine of the angular separation between the applied force and the displacement itself. So I'll just say cosine theta f applied. So we can go ahead and look at this. We've got our forces in this direction, i hat direction, our displacements in the i hat direction. So what's the angle between them? It's it, zero degrees. So we've got ourselves the theta sub f applied is equal to zero degrees. And thus the cosine of zero is equal to one. And we are left with the work done by the applied force, then just being equal to the magnitude of the applied force multiplied by the displacement. And that is going to be 15 newtons times of three meters, which is then 45 joules. So our applied force does 45 joules of work. That's us, it takes 45 joules of our energy in order to push this block this three meters. Utilize 45 joules of energy. All right, so let's go on and start looking at some of these other forces that are in play here. We've also got the normal force and the force due to gravity. Let's take a look at those. Let's look at the work done by the normal force. Well, just go back to the definition again. The work done by a force is that force, which in this case is the normal force, dotted into the displacement vector, which is then n delta x times the cosine of theta, and I'll say theta sub n. And let's just look at what that angle of theta sub n is in this particular case. The normal force is that way in the j hat direction, and the displacement vector is in the i hat direction. What's the angle between those two vectors then? 90 degrees. Theta sub n is equal to 90 degrees, and the cosine of 90 degrees is equal to zero. So what do we get out of that? We get the work done by the normal force is nil. It doesn't do any work because there's no displacement that is in the direction of the normal force. So it can't be doing any work. It has nothing to do with this object moving uh, that way. Ultimately is what that is a statement of. We could also look at the gravitational force, which you should be able to conclude does basically the same thing here. We got the work done by F sub G is equal to F sub G hat dot delta X hat, which is then F sub G delta X times the co cosine of theta F sub G and theta F sub G again is equal to the angle between the force of gravity and the displacement. Hey, that's 90 degrees again. 90 degrees. And thus we get ourselves the work done by the force due to gravity is also equal to a zero. So the normal force in this case does no work, the force due to gravity does no work, so far just our applied force does work. Let's go ahead and look at one last force that we've got in this picture, 
the force of kinetic friction. All right, so let's take a look. D, we want the work done by F sub K, and that is going to be equal to F sub K hat dot delta X hat, which we can then write as being F sub K delta X times the cosine of theta F sub K. And what do we have? Let's look. We've got ourselves that the displacement vector delta x hat is uh, that way, and our force vector under consideration f sub k hat is that way, opposite direction. What do we get for the angle in between them? Whoop. That is 180 degrees. That is our theta f sub k. So we go ahead and say that theta f sub k is equal to 180 degrees and the cosine of theta f sub k is then equal to negative 1. The cosine of 180 degrees is equal to a negative 1. So let's we'll go ahead and stick this negative 1 in there and I'll rewrite this work done by the force of kinetic friction as being equal to the magnitude of the force of kinetic friction times delta x times negative 1. All right, so now we just got to figure out what is this F sub K? Well, we know that F sub K is mu K times N, and I'm going to write this out. I'm going to go ahead and put this negative sign out in front, and write this as negative mu K N delta X. There is the work done by friction. What is N in this case? The normal force? Well, that should be fairly evident. This is on a horizontal surface. Nothing's pushing down or pulling up on this object other than the gravitational force. So the normal force has to be equating the gravitational force, and thus it's just equal to mg. So we can go ahead and write that n is equal to mg in this case, because the net force in the y direction has to be equal to zero. Those are the only two forces. We only need the magnitude here. And what do we get out of this? We've got the work done by the force of kinetic friction is U K M G delta X. Change my little delta there to look more delta-ish. There we go. And we know what all these quantities are. So what do we get out of this? Well, we've got negative 0 0.235 times M, which is 2 kilograms, times G times delta X, which is 3 meters. So we quantify all of this out and We've got ourselves the work done by the force of kinetic friction is going to be equal to 0.235 times 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 13.818 joules made a negative sign out in front. Negative 13.818 joules. Negative work done. Ooh, what does that mean? Well, it means that it's taking energy away. We're pushing on it this way, doing 45 joules of work, taking 45 joules of our energy, and well, friction's taking away 13.818 joules of that energy. Let's go on and look at this a little bit more and quantify what the net work done is. So. We want to know now, part E, we want sigma sub so W. Net work done. What is it? It's the sum of all the works done, right? So we've got the work done by the applied force, plus the work done by the normal force, plus the work done by the force of gravity, plus the work done by kinetic friction. Well, we know that this is zero, and this is zero. We know that this is 45, and this is negative 13.818. So we can just go 45 minus, oh my gosh, 31.182. So let's write this down. Net work done is then equal to 45 joules plus zero plus zero plus negative 13.818 joules. Giving us again negative 31, excuse me, not negative, 31.182 joules 
net work done. There we go. So overall, how much work was done? This is how much. We did 45, friction took 13.818 away, and this is the end or result. So before we draw any other conclusions from this, what I want to do is actually look at the net force acting on this object, and then look at the work done by the net force, just to make a correlation here. So, vector dotted into the displacement vector. So let's figure out what the net force is. We should note this, the net force in the y direction is equal to zero. This object's not moving up, it's not moving down, it's only moving horizontally, which leaves us with the net force in the x direction being equivalent then to the overall net force, which is then equal to the sum of all forces acting in the x direction which is F applied hat plus F sub K hat, which is, well, we can start putting in some things here. We know that F applied is equal to 15 newtons I hat. And F sub K, well, that is going to be in the opposite direction that this object's moving. So it is in the negative I hat direction and has a magnitude of mu K times N. So we can write negative mu k n i hat negative i hat direction there's the magnitude of it this is what we've got so when we go ahead and quantify this out we've got again n is just equal to mg and we've got quantity of 15 minus 0 0.235 mu k times m times g and then we'll throw in i hat right there squeezing it in what does that leave us with? Well, let's see, we've got 15 minus the quantity, 8.235 times 2 times 9.8, gives us 10.394. So this is our net force. Net force is equal to 10.394 newtons in the I hat direction. So we come back up to this. We want ourselves to know what is the net excuse me, the work done by the net force, the work done by the net force is going to be, again, the net force times delta x times the cosine of theta sigma f. Theta sigma f, well, that's in the i hat direction, and so is the displacement, so theta sigma f is equal to zero degrees, cosine of zero is just equal to one, so this resolves down into just sigma f times delta x. Well, let's look at this. The work done by the net force is then equal to 10.394 newtons multiplied by three meters. So let's look at see what that ends up being. Hmm, that times three is equal to 31.182. 31.182 joules. That is the net work done. Does that number seem familiar? Of course it does. It's the same thing that we got in terms of the net work done. It's because they're the same things. The work done by the net force is equivalent to the net work done. Because really, we're adding up the individual works, or we're adding up all the forces and seeing what the overall work done is. So. They're the same thing. That is to say that the net work done is equal to the work done by the net force. So you state it either way, you get the same result. All right. So what else do we have? Well, we've got ourselves the desire to figure out some other things regarding the motion of this object. This object moves, we've got the supplied force, got the force of friction affecting its motion. This object's initially at rest. It has to obtain some sort of velocity, right? We have a 
net force, we would have an acceleration, and thus a change in the object's velocity over time. Can we figure out some things about that? Of course we can, but we're going to do it now utilizing energy considerations. So we go on to a part G and start asking, hey, what is the object's change in kinetic energy over this three meter displacement? Delta Ke is equal to a what? Well, we know that the change in kinetic energy is equal to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. That's great. And the initial kinetic energy is zero because the object's initially at rest. That's fantastic too. But we've also got the work energy theorem. Super important because that makes this really easy to answer. We've got that the net work done produces the object's change in kinetic energy. Work energy theorem. There it is. We already know what this is. So we know as a quantity what the object's change in kinetic energy is. Because the net work done was 31.182 joules, which is then equal to object's change in kinetic energy. There it is. Simple as that. Do the same thing quantity-wise. But now we can ask something else. Like, hmm, what is the object's speed after moving this three meter distance. What is the final velocity of the object? We know it's moving in the i-hat direction. That's great. So let's just figure out how fast it's going. Well, we could go through once again and figure out what the acceleration is and use the equation of the motion for constant acceleration and figure out how fast it's going over that three meter displacement. Or we can just skip straight to kinetic energy and the change in. We know, once again, delta Ke is equal to Ke final minus Ke initial, which then expands out into being 1 half mv final squared minus 1 half mv initial squared. So we've got the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. And we know that v initial was equal to 0, so that whole term there is equal to 0. So this says that the change in kinetic energy is equivalent to the final kinetic energy, which is 1 half mv final squared. And we know the change in kinetic energy is equal to 31.182 joules. So we can solve this out for v final. Multiply both sides by 2, divide by m, take the square root of both sides, and we've got ourselves that v final is equal to the square root of 2 times 31.182 joules divided by the mass. The mass is equal to 2 kilograms, so this ends up just being equal to the square root of 31.182. Oops. Square root. And we get 5.584. 5.584 meters per second. There we go. Use some work, use some energy to figure out the object's final velocity. Didn't have to compute the acceleration, even though we could and utilize that. Ends up being much easier in the end to utilize changes in kinetic energy. Because if the force isn't constant, you don't have constant acceleration, and then you don't have the equation of the motion for constant acceleration. But whether or not the force, the net force, is constant, will always have that the net work done produces the object's change in kinetic energy. That's really nice and fundamental. So, a nice little example. We'll do some more here in a bit. Thanks.